ears are torn I have to pass Lift every voice and sing which is known as the Negro or Black National Anthem was written by James Weldon Johnson in 1900. As we review and repeat in our minds the atrocities that happened in our nation's capital last week, my mind goes to the third verse that says, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far, on the way. Thou was by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in your path, we pray. was the Lord. I always told him, I trust you. I don't know where to go or what to do, but I expect you to lead me. And he always did. Harriet Tubman. People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but that isn't true. I was not physically tired. No, the only tired I was was tired of giving in. Rosa Parks. The people I passed every morning as I walked up the school steps were full of hate. They were white, but so was my teacher, who couldn't have been more different from them. She was one of the most loving people I had ever known. Ruby Bridges. Good evening. I am Tiffany Post Salters, the president of Thanks to New Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I, along with my illustrious sisters, are elated that you have joined us in the celebration of the inauguration of the 46th president of these United States, Joseph R. Biden, and our sister, the Kamala Harris, the paramount plethora of talent that you are about to partake in this evening will remind you that you are America, we are America, they are America, I am America. To all of our participants, their parents, and to the esteemed D9 family who provided talent on this evening, to our technical guru, Daniel Stallings, and to the great Jared Eady, our speaker for this evening. We are forever grateful for your inspiring, empowering, and uplifting words. I leave with you this evening the words of our sister, Kamala Harris. What I want young women and girls to know is this. You are powerful. Your voice matters. You are going to walk in many rooms in your life and in career where you may be the only one who looks like you and may be the only one who has the experiences you've had. But you remember that when you are in those rooms, you are not alone. We are all in the room with you, applauding you and cheering your voice and so proud of you. So you use that voice to be strong. Thank you again for joining us and enjoy the evening.
Dulu lah, ada nanya di bawah mereka. Dulu lah, kalau jatuhnya, one nation, under God, in the middle, with everything and justice for all. I am America. We are America. We don't give up on our youth, for we know that they are our legacies. They are our future. And so tonight we present to you some of our American youth. Listen to Jael Sparrow, Sydney Hudson, Zaire Saldana, Cadence Campbell, and Xander Williams. We have not forgotten the promises that have been made to us. And so we know that we are America. They are America. I am America. Hear ye them. Thank you. 
Hey, Cadence, do you know who you are? Who you really are? Do you know you can be what you want to be? If you try to be what you can't, what you can be. Hey, Cadence, do you know where you're going? Where you're really going? Do you know you can learn what you want to learn? If you try to learn what you can learn. Hey, Xander, do you know you are strong? I mean, really strong. Do you know you can do what you want to do? If you try to do what you can't do. Hey, Xander, be what you can be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you can do. And tomorrow, your nation will be what you want it to be. Seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the graves of wrath are stored, and he has loosed the faithful lightning. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's truth is marching.
marching on. Our speaker for this evening is Jared R. Eady. Mr. Jared Eady is a fourth generation resident of Fort Myers, Florida and an alumnus of Fort Myers High School. He entered the Garnet and Gold Halls of the Florida State University where he majored in political science with minors in history, urban regional planning, and black studies. While at FSU, he served as student body president, president of the student senate, a member of the Florida State University Board of Trustees, a member of the Florida Board of Governors, Omicron Delta Kappa Leadership Honorary Society, Burning Spear, and listed in the Florida State University Senior Hall of Fame for the graduating class of 2004. His current and past community and civic involvement in Southwest Florida includes serving as the president of the National Pan-Hellenic Council of Southwest Florida, chairman of the Lee County Black History Society and Williams Academy Black History Museum Board of Directors, chairman of the Southwest Florida Alpha Educational and Leadership Foundation, a member of the Fort Myers Community Redevelopment Agency Advisory Board, parliamentarian of the Xi Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, chairman of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Unity Breakfast, past president of the Dunbar Festival Committee, former coordinator and organizer of the Dunbar Easter Parade, past president of the 100 Black Men of Southwest Florida Incorporated, former chairman of the Lee County Board of County Commissioners Black Affairs Advisory Board, former chairman of the Lee County Board of County Commissioners Multicultural Affairs Advisory Board, former parliamentarian of the Lee County Branch of the NAACP, former president of the Xi Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, a member of Friendship Baptist Church, the Florida State University Alumni Association, as well as the Seminole Boosters Incorporated. Jared was nominated as 2007's Lee County Citizen of the Year and was selected as the Lee County School District's Social Studies Teacher of the Year during the 2008-2009 school year. He currently serves as the, as the school district of Lee County's director of the advancement via individual determination program, AVID, and the director of diversity and inclusion. And might I add as a note of privilege, Jared is a nephew of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Hear ye him, our son, Jared R. Eady. Greetings to each of you gathered to partake in this evening's event. I offer my sincere thanks to the ladies of the Theta Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated for allowing me to fellowship with you during your homecoming spirit week. The legacy and lineage of the sisters of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority are conspicuously woven into the fabric of these United States of America. The trailblazing vision and foundation cast by your founder, Mrs. Ethel Hedgeman Lyle, wife of Alpha Phi Alpha brother George Lyle, remains whole and mission-driven some 113 years later. Moreover, your local chapter's presence in our community remains a cornerstone of sisterhood while you continue to do things that are worthwhile. 
To the many women gathered in this sacred virtual space, I offer a collective thank you. Thank you for the roles you play in our community, in our nation, and in our world. I stand resolutely as your brother and your son, for you are my sisters, my mothers, my aunts, and my friends. I am because we are. Indeed, time is filled with swift transitions, not on earth unmoved can stand. But through the test of time, we remain. From the diamond, ivory, and gold-bearing coast of Africa to the long, treacherous journey across the Atlantic Ocean, bodies shackled together for months in the underbelly of hot and damp ships across the Middle Passage. And yet, there remained many rivers to cross. From the rice fields of South Carolina to the cotton fields of Alabama and Mississippi, to the seacoast and ports of Maryland, to the tobacco fields of Virginia, to the lowland country of Georgia, and yet there remained many rivers to cross. From an assembly gathered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, within the walls of Independence Hall, while the words all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, were scribed, codified, and etched as a declaration of independence. A document known to all, but a document that did not stretch far and wide to engross the brothers and sisters of a darker hue. To Crispus Attucks, a black man, dying in the Boston Massacre as the first casualty of the American Revolution. And yet, there remain many rivers to cross. From the sanctuary of St. George's Methodist Church, where congregants were segregated based on race, thus prompting Richard Allen and Absalom Jones, free men of color, to lead an exodus from those walls and craft the foundation of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And yet, there remained many rivers to cross. From the steps of the U.S. Capitol building and the White House, where the brick and mortar of these symbols of freedom were laid and intertwined from the sweat from those of the darker hue who were not included in We the People. To the Haitian Revolution, driving the French from the island and thus providing an opportunity for President Thomas Jefferson to acquire the vast Louisiana territory and expand the borders of these United States of America. And yet, there remained many rivers to cross. From Dixieland and the cradle of the Confederacy, where noble black soldiers traded their tattered rags of enslavement and adorned themselves in union insignia to fight for the notion of freedom and emancipation. To the Civil War battlefields in places such as Petersburg, Virginia, Fort Pillow, Tennessee, and even Fort Myers, Florida, where these soldiers demonstrated their bravery and their valor, and yet there remained many rivers to cross. From the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., serving as the great awakener of America's consciousness, standing at the foot of the Lincoln Memorial and telling the world about his dream, about the great promissory note for life, for liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as delineated in our founding documents. And yet, there remained many rivers to cross to the balcony of a Memphis, Tennessee hotel where this drum major for justice was struck down by an assassin's bullet before he welcomed his 40th birthday. And yet there remained many rivers to cross. From poll taxes, literacy tests, grandfather clauses, 
all codified in law to disenfranchise millions of black voters, to the election of President Barack Obama as the first black man to occupy the Oval Office. And yet, there remained many rivers to cross. From Sanford, Florida, Ferguson, Missouri, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Louisville, Kentucky, where calls for social justice were televised for the world to see, to shake our collective consciousness and reaffirm the promised creed of liberty and justice for all. From the lead up to the most heavily guarded inauguration and planning in our nation's capital and our nation's history. To your sister of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, Vice President Kamala Harris, now serving as the Vice President of these United States of America, the first female, the first black American, the first woman of South Asian descent to ascend to the level of the vice president of this country. And yet there remains many rivers to cross. But I submit to you today that each of us and within each of us have a cross to bear and elements and the essence to make sure that those men and women whose names we still speak of and consider history still resonate with us today. The journey, the story, the understanding that history happens every day. For history is the collection of situations, occurrences, words, deeds, and acts upon which we refer back to for guidance and reflection. We create history and impression in the lives of the generations following us, for they are watching. But how do we create our flourishing and worthy heritage as everyday people? For our inner beings and our spirit are in a constant state of gestation. Our inner being requires the impregnation of septuplets or seven attributes of which that require nurturing as we would nurture our own children. Those seven attributes include love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. These septuplets should be growing inside our inner being as we give birth daily to who we should be, as we are strengthened with might. In preparation for tonight's event, I took time for personal reflection and pondering on the essential agreements that must be fostered to garner the laurel reef of unity, the reef of justice and collective empowerment. For how can we fully achieve a just society lest we perish together? How can we fully apply no man is an island of him to himself? Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Do we truly reflect any man's death diminishes me for I am involved in mankind. Therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. I pondered on the quality of community collaborations, groups, and everyone working together. Are we working together or are we on an endless quest for self-glorification and cronyism? Do we seek and find the good in others and rejoice for the success of our fellow man and woman? Or do we rejoice at the appearance of setback and the failure of another? Do we embrace all with the kiss of peace without regard to race, a creed, a religion, a sexual orientation, or a gender identity differing from our own? Or do we sit in the seat of judgment, hammering the gavel of condemnation with repeated raps of those people and people like that? Have we thrown the book at our fellow man and sentenced each other to the prison of insignificance? I pondered on the future for our next generation, our children. Have we manifested an actualization of the dreamer and his dream? Have we created a society where our parents and our educators 
work toward the words of Dr. King's favorite song, which always provides a timeless rallying cry. If I can help somebody as I go along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody that they're traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain, lest we perish together. So how do we learn to work together as brothers and sisters? Brothers and sisters from all races, all ethnicities, all genders, all orientations. We're now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We're confronted with the fierce urgency of now. And this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. The ever-present rivers remain with dangers seen and unseen. But my brothers and sisters, are you ready for the journey? Are you up for the task? For we each have many rivers to cross. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening.